Yeah, what's going on? <clears throat> this one's about the Israelites again. But it's not what you think it is. It's not hate neither. It's just observations. People, a lot of people think I hate or I try to look deliberately for reasons to critique or hate on people. And the guilty always say, oh, you only hate on black people. Doesn't matter if it's black or white. Like Michael Jackson said, the only thing that matters is if I'm right or if I'm wrong. And so far, nobody's told me I'm wrong. <laughs> so uh, that says a whole lot. I've been watching these Israelites for years and years and years and years. Different camps, even more, seem to be popping up every day. And Israelites, I'm tying this in with the Pan-African movement. I know you say to yourself at first, these two are opposed to each other. Israelites, they don't like Africans. Pan-Africans figure we're all in it together. Except for the Africans, of course. Not that they don't want the Africans, it's just that the Africans are not involved. Africans wipe their hands clean with the stuff. And yes, I'm taping, taking a sip of water. Um, I take a sip with other microphone. Apparently one is uh, more sensitive than the other, I guess. But um, one wipes their hands with the uh, African, pan-African movement. The other one, they dismiss the African outright. And that's the Israelites. They go to great lengths to tell you that their brothers, they're not Africans. They look similar. See, that, that fits in with the Aboriginal uh, argument, which is we're similar, which black peoples the world over are similar in, in main characteristics, but we're not all the same. Now, we're part of the, the largest uh, same group, but we're not the exact same. You know, and, and that's the problem. Everybody's trying to make us the exact same. See, the white man wants to make himself the exact same and throw in some other groups that had historical significance who, who, or who occupy certain lands. But you have to understand, at one point in time, a lot of these people he considers or accepts loosely as white or Caucasoid before he outright denied and rejected. But then he realized the numbers are small. I better get these people on board with me instead of on board with others. So when it comes to these Israelites and Pan-African, the one thing I've been noticing is in a sense, they're basically on the same page. And what do I mean by that? When you look at the Israelites, they deny people from Africa, but they'll accept people who look like they're from Africa as long as they say that they're not from Africa. <laughs> you see, Pan-Africans, they'll accept people who looks like an African no matter where they're from. But they don't accept any old black person, which is why I always bring up the East Indians. And then I really hit them when I bring up black Asians. And when I say black Asians, I don't def I don't simply just mean Mongol style black Asians. I'm talking about, you know, South Pacific style black Asians who are not all in the Pacific course that means east indians that means black arabs that means various other blacks throughout asia they get quiet on that because they may not know about it or they may have to say god damn it what if these people don't call themselves black?" that's what i noticed if the with the pan-african group they take they tend to want to control those who don't have a voice the naked the abused blacks throughout the world. Those are the ones who they want to speak for. But the ones with the voice, 
the ones with money, the ones with a title, Arabs, East Indians, Sri Lankans, all these kind of black Europeans who are not from the Caribbean. I'm talking about the kind that who are not from the Caribbean. Or blacks, Europeans who are from Africa. They don't speak for these people because these people are speaking for themselves. And they're not telling you, I'm down with that. Why would somebody from India want to be down with Pan-Africanism? It doesn't make sense. Why would somebody from Australia want to be down with Pan-Africanism unless they need some allies? See, Africa, they don't want to be down with Pan-Africanism. So why would you expect somebody with their own country that's ne not necessarily near Africa to be down with that? <clears throat> so then, when they don't declare, I'm black, I'm an African. Pan-Africanists, they dismiss or omit. And when it comes to these Israelites, now what they do is they reject the African outright. But a lot of them are a bunch of idiots that they don't even, they can't really readily identify the African just upon sight, like a lot of us can. And on top of that, the main thing is these people who are from the Caribbean, who they include as Israelites, they're Africans. But according to their modified Israelite doctrine, They were Hebrews taken as slaves. But like others point out, what the Hebrew Israelites would do, <clears throat> they'll take a white style, so-called Latino, or any Italian or somebody like that. They'll say, oh yeah, they're Israelite. But they don't explain why. And obviously we can infer that they mean that there's black in them. So... That's why they're a so-called Israelite. But see, the problem with the Israelite doctrine is whether it's in Europe or Africa, they want to label everybody an Israelite. How can you be claim uh, Egyptian civilization, Moors and all that as Israelites and Europeans as Israelites when they're not practicing that religion? whether it's so-called Christianity or Judaism. You want to claim them for his historical purposes, but yet you reject the African any other time. You can't have it both ways. You can't uh, accept Africa for the accomplishments, just like the white man does, but dismiss the people. You got to be clear. Truth be told, you look at ancient Israel, there weren't, weren't too many of them. So... And they never ruled the world. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, that's the main thing. They never really had a big empire. But, again, both sides are more or less pan-African. Except one side claims Israel, the other side claims Africa. And what I mean by that, the Israelites, they use all the Caribbeans and all the blacks in the Western Hemisphere... And, and they slap an Israelite, Hebrew Israelite label on them. But a lot of these people are African. And then they say, okay, whatever your father was, that's what you were. I mean, to tell me all the slaves that came out here were Hebrews. And none were just straight up Africans. Then others made the mention that people become mixed and if they've been mixed and then they were sold to the Americas as Hebrews then you've been modified quite a bit so how can you just still claim to be a Hebrew and what the Israelites do they, they hate the African even more to try and put distance between the African and themselves and it's weird they'll tell you don't like the white woman or the white style woman stick with your own but then that own 
to be uh, a white style Latino that they'll accept. And you look around, you see black people's hair is starting to get shinier and shinier, shinier due to mixing and blonder and blonder. So, like I said, black people don't lo- really love themselves, but. So, these guys, man, I, you know, I, I, I was looking at a video today. That's, that's what really triggered this, man. Made me say, man, these guys, just like the Pan-African movement, if you notice, it's the Caribbeans that you keep hearing most of the time. Have you noticed that? In the Pan-African movement, you never, you don't hear the African, never. But it's always the Caribbean. And the Hebrew Israelites is always the Caribbean. Judah is supposed to be the black American, the prime tribe. But Benjamin, the Jamaicans, are always the loud mouths. Always the one in control. Well, not in control, but always the one that you hear the most. And Simeon, which I believe that's the Haitians, next up. And those damn Dominicans, come on. So, again, when you look at both sides, that's what you see. You see a Caribbean uh, contribution. The African is crossed out, as you should, as they should be in the Hebrew uh, world. So, you know, it's something that just caught my attention. It made me say, man, you know, when you really... And all these people coming from weird states. New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania. Yeah, damn. What the fuck is doing? I guess they don't love where they come from. Hey. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just saying, man. Both of these have parallels to each other. And I, I just find it pretty weird. I think there's something to it. And like I, I've been saying, you know, I really suspect that somebody is paying the, the Israelites to go out and preach. I really believe that. You know, I wouldn't doubt if it's $25, $50 a day. You know, to go out and do what they do. And again, I believe the reason is because as the Jews consolidate power more, they want to try and get black people on board with being a, a Hebrew or an Israelite or a Jew. And it also seems to coincide with the whole thing that we see in society, which is to make Christians turn hypocrite and be hypocrite by accepting homosexuality, eating tons of bacon, uh, tons of shrimp. Because when you think about it, that's what you see all the time. Bacon this, bacon that, sauces this, sauces that, shrimp, shrimp platter, shrimp scampi, $5 shrimp, all this kind of stuff, lobster. You know, the animals that they say that you're not supposed to eat. Pork rind. Uh, pork, what is it? Pork, uh, what is it? Pork barbecue, whatever the hell it is. Chopped barbecue. All that kind of stuff. Pork ribs. They want you to eat all that kind of stuff. And then, with, in the homosexuality. So, when they charge you, when you want to call yourself a Christian or a believer in the Bible. Uh, which is not the same thing, by the way. Then they can look at you and say, hey, we got you. You eat pork, you eat shrimp, you love being gay. I mean, you're you're hypocrites. And then whoever attaches on to uh, any form of uh, Jew-related activity, they'll say, okay, we'll get down with them. I just think it's bizarre. Because I've been trying, because like I said before in other videos, You just can't get black people to get up to even go to work on time a lot of times. Uh, uh, Or you can't get them to pick you up at the time that they said they were going to pick you up. Uh, Matter of fact, my own little experience when people go doing live uh, hangouts, shit, they can't even start on time. Shit. And then they say they're going to the topic is going to be one thing. Then they switch that up on you. So, since we know that's the case, we know man, it's, it's hard to believe that only the Lord and the Bible makes these Israelites go outside and, and preach what they preach. It has to be some kind of stipend. 
Because that's what I said. Somebody has to be paying them. Because nobody else. Pan-Africans. Black Panthers. New Black Panthers. Nobody. Whoever you could think of. Nobody out is dedicated like they are. To preaching the word. Now a lot of crews. You see some guys. They they come. They go. Especially in a Zaybox. Uh, we got next crew. People come. People go. And then you find out that a lot of those guys are, you know, doing things that they shouldn't be doing. But, um, I think it's pretty weird, man. And, you know, I'm always thinking. It's not hating. It's, it's thinking. When something doesn't seem to line right, then my mind starts thinking, okay, well, why are they doing this? Why are they saying this? Something's up. And, uh, it's just food for thought. You know, the Caribbean connection with the Pan-African and the Israelites. The Pan-African accepts the African, but the African doesn't want to want to join. The, the his Israelites, uh, they deny and reject the African. But the Caribbeans can join. And now what, what's the what's in common? Regardless of ideology. The Caribbean. That's what's uh, in common. That's the mainstay. That seems to be the core of the situation. Why must we always include the Caribbean? Is it because we don't know any other black people? Is it because they're the closest foreign black people? Is it because they're our brothers? Or is it because nobody else is claiming black? And we need some allies, we need something. I mean, what, what is it? Like we said, Pan-Africanism obviously deals with the Caribbeans. That's their ideology. That's not Africa's uh, ideology. Now, the Hebrew Israelites, there's one group I give it up to them. They did go to Israel. And they did talk a lot of the talk that they talked. Obviously, they ain't going to talk the same way, of course, you know different laws out there <laughs> but they I, I i give it to them even one of them was a caribbean guy but truth be told with the uh, israelites they really haven't proven their case on uh us being israelites and how it is that they've proven their case that the white man is not an israelite though but i like some of them to just why uh, white jews have black characteristics now, I was on a uh, live, what is it, hangout with those two dudes. And, uh, you know, I was taken aback a little bit because I was surprised they had white people on the panel. One guy was a Jew talking that bullshit. I guess he's used to talking to them, so he's not used to a guy like me who can check him on his bullshit. But I notice every time I try to check somebody, whether it's on the TRS show or... And that hangout, especially when I try to check white people. I notice black people always interrupt and try to stop the flow. That's what I notice. But the man claimed he was a Jew using that jive talk, talking that shit to us, calling us brother, trying to seduce the mind. Maybe those other guys fall for that shit, but I wasn't. But I was trying to ask some questions because my man kept on saying a whole bunch of interesting things. You know, like I say, every time black people are doing something no matter what it is you can always find the Jew on the scene always just ask them a few questions you'll get some answers but they're crafty they work together and my man was slick at uh, providing or shall I say addressing a question with some type of statement but he never answered them and then I try to go on. I want to start an argument. But the host, of course, he's either down with it. That's why I know a lot of these pro black people, they either down with these white people, controlled by them, or something, because they keep trying to stop good questions. And when these guys avoid answering questions, it's like the black guys want to intervene they don't, they don't want the the full answer to come out now i i know how to press people i know how to bring it out of them 
I know how to bring the truth out of them or expose the lie. I can't help it. That's what I do. So, you know, it's just some things I notice about these uh, Israelites and the Pan-African movement. A lot of similarities, which gets you to thinking about a great many things. Now, both of them, also, they're not religious-based. Because Pan-African is supposed to be an ideology. Being a Hebrew Israelite is supposed to be a way of life. You flip that with the other, or the Freemason uh, groups that are, at least that appear to be religious-based on the, on the uh, outside. Such as the 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 Moors, Nation of Islam, uh, Nation of Gods and Earth, yes, them too. <laughs> uh, these type of groups, these Freemason uh, type groups, which of course, free, these groups kind of mix in with the Pan African shit too. They're all related because they reject the opposite religion. And they really reject religion, period, because they're not really practicing religion. It's just that the Moors, Nation of Islam, they're like based on the Islamic facet of Freemasonry, while the Pan-Africanists are under the main tenet of Freemasonry, which is to follow the ancient Egyptian ways. And um, this is why you had... When you have people who reject our uh, so-called argument that we come from Africa, this is why you have the Pan-African that's getting upset. And, I mean, they're going crazy trying to figure out what they can do to uh, challenge the arguments. So what they do is, like, Sarnetta, he has his man Jabari, which is, of course, Boule, and Dr. Ali Muhammad, who, who they get to... Uh, Argue with each other, debate with each other, all set up, you know. How are you going to have a real debate between people of the same crew? I mean, people can't recognize a put on when you see it. Come on. I want to see Dane Calloway debate one of these guys or at least do a motherfucking phone interview. Mr. Calloway, just do the interview. I mean, you did one with somebody who seems to be your ally, but I mean, all right, see, you guys got to do these interviews with people who are opposed to you, who want to prove you wrong. That's what I want to see. That's, that's, that's who I go to. People want to keep trying to prove me wrong. Then when they realize they can't, they want to go into a different topic. But that's what I need to see in an interview. Dane Calloway, I, I hope you do it because I want to see what you're all about, man. And if you can defend your position, then uh, that's, that's, that's positive for you, you know? Now, if you can't, that's a different story. Maybe that could be why you don't want to debate or at least interview with these guys. Tell them why they're wrong. I like to hear somebody from outside of their circle. I don't know if they're getting in contact with you or not, you know? But Sarnet is a slick bastard, I know that. And he does what his white masters uh, command of him. So I'd like to see an outside debate because that Ali Jabari stuff, you know, that, that, that was just sad, man. And people fell for it and act like it was something real. I'm still waiting for these guys to go to a local university, even a goddamn community college. Grab a professor, adjunct, or tenured. Grab them out of there. And go for yours. But they won't do that because they have an agenda. And they don't want to be stomped into the ground. So that's why they don't debate anybody from the outside. Because they have to look like they're winning. And as you saw with that Ali Muhammad taking the aboriginal position. Everybody wants to claim that he lost that so-called debate. Meaning that the aboriginal uh, position lost to debate that's what that's all about now as we know Ali Muhammad 
was down with the Nation of Islam. I guess he was a renegade Nation of Islam member. And so how are you going to be Aboriginal all of a sudden, Ali Muhammad? If you're Aboriginal, why are you calling yourself Ali Muhammad? I mean, let's get real, man. We got to think about these things. These guys are full of shit. And I know they're listening because, yeah, I see the subs. So I know their crew is sub to me. Not not because they like me. Some of them may may actually like me. You know? <laughs> maybe they like people like me saying things that uh, maybe they don't want to say. But more likely than not, they're probably just monitoring me. So, I know you hear me. I know you mention me without he- saying my name because you don't want me to come up. I'll come and give you a showdown. But you don't want that. Because you people aren't smart enough. Even Jabari, the educated man. He's slick. He's uh, conniving. See, his his style of debate works on ghetto type type people. Ghetto educated, ghetto scholars. That's, That's what his type of debate works on. See, mine, I modify mine as we go along. And I tell you how I do it because I just want you to do your thing. And if you come come lying, then I already know I got you. So either one of those guys I deal with, Ali Muhammad is a kooky individual. Man always got some secret knowledge only known to him. Find that pretty weird. I guess that's kind of like a Dr. York uh, type of ideology. But. The sooner we can get these bozos, these wackos out of our minds, these Dr. Yorks, these Ali Muhammads, these Sarnettas, all these other do nothing, go nowhere, waste our time, not trying to get us anywhere people, the better we can move on. And the sooner we can move on. That's my whole point. And, you know, maybe I need to start a Kickstarter or some other kind of uh, donation thing because that. Go fund me, man. They keep bullshitting, man. They keep telling me to set up withdrawals. I do it, and then they just keep the shit in limbo. Because I keep thinking about the donations these other people get. And none of them do anything for the people. None of them declare that they're going to do anything for the people. With the money. They just say, I'm glad to have the money. And I'm not going to war with Dan Calloway, but I must say. My man seems to be money oriented from what I can see of the guy. Because at at the start of every video, you know, what does he say? He says, hey, man, donate to Patreon, PayPal, this, that, the other. I got merchandise. Uh, Go to my website. Uh, Everything is uh, very much appreciated. Then I saw a live stream of his. And. You know, this just gets to me because I can't help but notice these things. He started getting super chat donations. And he's like, um, oh, man, thank you, man. What's that? Oh, that's a do- that's donations. I didn't know that. Oh, man, this is my first time doing this. I'm like, man, come on, man. Stop the bullshit, man. Because I'm here to tell you the truth, man. I'm not here to bullshit you. To set up Super Chat, you have to do that consciously. You have to know that's what you want. Because you have to fill out fill out a short form to uh, set off the Super Chat. So there's no way you can just start getting Super Chat donations and be like, what? What's that? Oh, those are donations. I didn't know that. Come on. You know that. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yvette Carnell. Tariq Nasheed, these people know that. That's why they keep going live. Now, Yvette Carnell, she's getting paid. I think she might be making more off of her super chat than uh, Tariq Nasheed. But Tariq Nasheed doesn't need the damn super chat any goddamn way. Uh, Sarnetta, he doesn't make too, too much off the super chat, which is a good thing. You know, a man driving S Class. What does he need the money for? Tariq Nasheed, living in a mansion. What does he What does he need the money for? You know, 
He keeps saying, oh, we're donating it to charity. You know how I do. We don't know how you do. <laughs> I mean, if you're donating it to charity, would you keep asking money for money for all the time? I mean, you ask for, uh, I mean, you ask for more money than these other people who, who don't claim to have a whole lot of money. But that's the thing. The people get the money and none of them are committed to using the money to help black people out. Now, Dane Calloway, he says, listen, thanks for the donations to help me continue my research in this important work. That's fine. Truth is, you need capital in order to better investigate because, yeah, some papers do cost money. Things that they prefer to keep people uh, away from, they cost money. You know, they say it's available to the public, but not available to the public for free. That, 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 that is true. But the truth is, and again, I'm not attacking the man because, again, he's still going down a line uh, of uh, interest that I prefer be put out there than not be put out there. You know, because like I always said, this African shit, there's no evidence of that. There's more evidence that we are native to America or have something to do with Native America than we do Africa. There's almost zero evidence that we have anything to do with Africa. And we might have something to do with another place, too. That's very unexpected. But uh, I'm not going to get into that today because the main thing was about the Israelites and the Pan-African. So... Damn, his bright ass high beams. Damn, these motherfuckers. God damn. But, um. Yeah, there's these Israelites and Pan Africans, man. It's pretty peculiar. That's all I'm saying. That's why when a lot of these groups come out of nowhere and they keep trying to force things on you, you must always ask yourself, why do they keep trying to force their positions on me? Who put them out? If you can't find out who put them out, ask why are they out there? Ask why did they stay out there? What kind of dedication makes them stay out there? Pan-Africans, we know what the deal is. It's, they're Freemasons. That's what that is. You know? That's why they stay out there. They get jobs, they get money, they get tax breaks, they get whatever the hell they get to keep them rolling. Israelites, yeah, I'm still working on it. I'm, I'm going to crack the code on these guys, man. But a lot of them are revealing a whole lot. And uh, just find it pretty strange. But like I said, out of all the groups, they're still the strongest one when it comes to their organization and what they claim to believe in. So I give it up to them for that. Well, all the others, they just fell apart with all their ideology and, and, and bullshit. So, you know, I think I said what I had to say on that point. This is food for thought when it comes to these two groups and why they're so similar, even though they seem different. It's like Bloods and Crips, Republicans, Democrats. You have one group pro-African, another group anti-African. But yet... When you think about it, they both revolve around Africa. Food for thought.